Lord, we will learn about the deity and names of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit is right now surrounding you? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I can just feel the strong presence of the Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Holy Spirit is a person. We believe that the Holy Spirit is a person because He possesses all the necessary qualities of intellect. The Holy Spirit has emotion. He possesses that will and that knowledge and that actions. Therefore, let us never insult the Holy Spirit by just calling Him it. But we shall always honor the Holy Spirit properly. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is not only a human person, for He is not a human person, brothers and sisters in the Lord, because He does not possess human body as we do, but the Holy Spirit is not only a person, but we believe He is a divine person. The Holy Spirit is a divine person. The Holy Spirit is God Almighty, equal to the Father and the Son in every respect. You see, we believe the Holy Spirit is divine because the Holy Spirit possesses divine attributes. And what are those divine attributes? Number one, the Holy Spirit is eternal. Yeah? Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God? From that alone, from that verse, Hebrews 9.14, we know that the Holy Spirit is eternal. Second, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. What does omnipresent mean? The book of Psalms 139, starting from verse 7 to 10, says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, Thou art there. So you can see that the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He is everywhere. And third, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. What does omnipotent say, means? The Bible says in Luke 135, the power of the Holy Ghost for the conception of the Holy Child. And in the book of Genesis 1 2, it says, The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And in the book of Job 26 13, it says, By his Spirit he had guarded the heavens. So the Holy Spirit is an all powerful God, he is an omnipotent God. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, starting from verse 10 to 11, it says, The Spirit searcheth all things, yeah, the deep things of God. Knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So from here we can say the Holy Spirit is omniscient. And in fact, in the book of John 14, 26, it says, but the Comforter, he shall teach you all things. And in the book of John 16, starting from verse 12 to 13, it says, the Spirit of truth is come, and he will guide you into all truth. That is one attribute of the Holy Spirit. He is an omniscient God. He is not only the eternal God, 
the omnipresent God, the omnipotent God, but He is the omniscient God. Another attribute of the Holy Spirit is holiness. Holiness. The book of Luke 11 13 says, The Holy Spirit, the word holy, is not a noun but an adjective describing his character. Holiness, the Holy Spirit. And his attribute is holiness. Another attribute of the Holy Spirit is truth. The book of 1 John 5, 6 says, It is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. The Holy Spirit is benevolent. The book of Nehemiah 9, 20 says, Thou gavest also thy good spirit, to instruct them. So he is a benevolent God. Another attribute of the Holy Spirit is communion. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, and the communion of the Holy Ghost. That's the communion. So we have this eight attributes of the Holy Spirit. He is the eternal, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient God and he, he is holy. He has an attribute of holiness. He is truth. He is the benevolent God and he is communion. Yes, those are the eight attributes of the Holy Spirit and we say the Holy Spirit is divine. He is a divine person because of these eight attributes brothers and sisters in the lord the holy spirit does things that only god could do one is creation the book of Job 33 4 says the spirit of god made me and the book of psalms 104 verse 30 says thou sendest forth thy spirit and they are created so the holy spirit does things that only god can do aside from creation we have number two salvation yes the book of first corinthians 6 11 says ye are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god also the sealing of the spirit and you can find that in the book of Ephesians 1 13 the Holy Spirit does things that only God can do aside from creation aside from giving salvation but the Holy Spirit also gives life giving life the book of John 6 63 says it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Holy Spirit does things that only God could do. Not only creation, not only salvation, not only giving life, but the Holy Spirit is the author, the author of a new birth. The book of John, chapter 3, starting from verse 5 to 6 says, Born of water and of the Spirit, that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So he is the author of the new birth. The Holy Spirit does things that only God could do, and he could prophesy. He could prophesy. 2 Peter 1.21 says, For no prophecy ever came by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit prophesied. And lastly, the Holy Spirit 
convincing men of righteousness and judgment to come. Yes, the Holy Spirit, He can convince men to be righteous and He can foretell of judgment to come. And you can find that in the book of John, chapter 16, starting from verse 8 to 11. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the scripture makes certain strong statements. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, starting from verse 8 to 10, it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, and Paul referring to this passage in the book of Acts 28, starting from verse 25 to 27, which says, Well spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias the prophet. So this identifies Lord and Holy Ghost. And in the book of Acts, chapter 3, starting from verse 3 to 5, the Holy Spirit is called God. You see, Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And you can find that in the book of Acts, chapter 5, starting from verse 3 to 5. The Holy Spirit is a divine couplets. What does divine couplets mean? The book of Matthew 28 verse 19 this is the baptismal formula which is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And the book of 2 Corinthians 13 14 this is the benediction the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. That is the benediction. And in the book of John 14, 16, it says, And I, Jesus Christ the Son, will pray the Father. I will pray the Father, which is God Himself, and He shall give you another comforter. And who is that another comforter? And that is God, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has divine couplets. The baptismal formula, the benediction, and we have John 14, 16, which says, And I, Jesus Christ the Son, will pray the Father, God Himself, and he shall give you another comforter, which is God, the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Holy Spirit is distinct from the Father and the Son. Some people think that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father or the Spirit of the Son, and not a separate, distinct person. The book of Luke Chapter 3, starting from verse 21 to 22. At the baptism of Jesus, three distinct persons are in evidence. God the Father said, Thou art my beloved Son. In thee I am well pleased. And God the Son was baptized by John the Baptist in the river Jordan. And God, the Holy Spirit, descended in bodily shape like a dove. So the Holy Spirit is distinct from the Father and the Son. The book of Matthew 28, 19, the baptismal formula makes a clear distinction between the three persons in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That is the baptismal formula which makes clear the distinction between the three persons. The book of John 14, 16, the Son prays, the Father sends the Holy Ghost. He comes to abide. Amen? He comes to guide every one of you. He comes to guide every Christians and every believers. 
The book of Acts 2, 33. The Son is exalted to the right hand of the Father, and the Father is on His throne. The Holy Spirit is received by the Son and given to the church. Therefore, brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three separate personalities with mutual relations one to another, speaking to one another, and recognizing each other. So that is the reason why the Holy Spirit is distinct from the Father and the Son. Now, how about the subordination of the Spirit to the Father and the Son? The book of John 14, 26. The Father sends the Holy Spirit to earth and obeys the command. And the book of John 15, 26. The Son sends the Holy Spirit to the believers and the church. Well, the book of Acts 16, 7. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the Spirit of Jesus. And in the book of Romans 8, 9, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit speaks not from Himself, but repeats that which He hears. The book of John 16, 13 says, He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And this is true humiliation and condescension. Condescension. Amen. You see, the Holy Spirit glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of John 16, 14 says, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. The name of the Holy Spirit follows that of the other two when the three are linked in one sentence. And you can find that in the book of Matthew 28, 19. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the book of 2 Corinthians 13, 14, it also says Son, Father, and Spirit. Amen. And we have so many other names of the Holy Spirit. The book of Luke 11.13 speaks about the Holy Spirit. Your heavenly Father gives the Holy Spirit. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit. John 3.6, that which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. Another name is the Spirit of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jehovah. Isaiah 61, 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Spirit of the living God. 2 Corinthians 3, 3 says, But with the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of Christ. Romans 8, 9 says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, another name of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of His Son. Galatians 4, 6 says, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Yes, Philippians 1.19 says, And the supply of the Spirit of Jesus. Yes, the Spirit of Jesus. Acts 16.7 says, The Spirit of Jesus suffered them not. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of burning. Yes, the Spirit of burning. Isaiah 4, 4 says, Perch the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. Romans 1, 4 says, According to the spirit of holiness. And another name of the Holy Spirit is the spirit, the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit of promise. 
Ephesians 1.13 says, Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Another name of the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. This is used even in the book of John 14, 17, in the book of John 15, 26, and in the book of John 16, 13. The spirit of truth. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge. And these thoughts and names occur. And you can find that in the book of Isaiah 11.2. Another name of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace. Hebrews 10.29 says, Done despite unto the spirit of grace. The spirit of glory. 1 Peter 4.14 says, For the Spirit of glory and of God, the eternal Spirit. Hebrews 9.14 says, through, through the eternal Spirit offered Himself. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit is also called the Comforter, and you can find that in the book of John 14.26 and in the book of John 15.26. And lastly, brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Holy Spirit is the oil of gladness. Amen. Hebrews 1.9 says, Anointed thee with the oil of gladness. So those are the names of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Holy Spirit is also likened to a dove, which is both timid and gentle. The Holy Spirit, He is likened to the wind. John 3, starting from verse 1 to 9, it says He is the unseen, mysterious force in regeneration. That is the Holy Spirit. He is likened to the wind. And He is like a spring of water. He is the cleansing force in sanctification. And you can find that in the book of John 4.14. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Holy Spirit is like an overflowing river of blessing in service. And you can find that in the book of John 7, studying from verse 38 to 39. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Holy Spirit, He is the comforter, consoling, guiding, and directing in the Christian life. And you can find that in the book of John 14 16 therefore brothers and sisters in the Lord I'd like to challenge everyone may we make much of the companionship of the living person the Holy Spirit amen and let this be our prayer Lord teach me more of the communion of the Holy Spirit and therefore let the Holy Spirit be our companion let the Holy Spirit be our partner and let the Holy Spirit be our comrade with whom we have intimate fellowship moment by moment and tonight may you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> Amen. Shall we give a round of applause to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And shall we pray? Hallelujah. Father, hallelujah. You said if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of you, O God. Because you said you will give to all men wisdom liberally and abraded not, and it shall be given unto him. Therefore, tonight we ask in faith nothing wavering to be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. 
Today we cline our ears unto wisdom and apply our hearts to understanding so that we might receive that which has been freely given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, Lord, we believe that the, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, it will keep us, it will defend us, it will protect us. And we love the Holy Spirit because He will continually guard us. Because the Holy Spirit will highly and exalt and bring honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and to God the Father. Therefore, we embrace the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen, hallelujah. Yes, we're, therefore, right now, tonight, we will walk in the paths of righteousness. And when we walk, our steps shall not be hampered our path will be clear and open and when we run we shall not stumble amen father in the name of jesus christ we look carefully to how we walk and we live purposely and worthily and accurately not as unwise and witless but as a wise sensible intelligent person making the most of our time and buying up every opportunity and we continue to ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit as we ask in Christ's name we pray amen thank you and God bless you and may we